Once upon a time, in a magical, clean place called New York City, there was an adorable orange orphan cat who only wanted to be loved. No, no, that's the wrong cat. Wrong cat, get him out of here. That That's wrong too. Come on, go get, get out of here. But he's funny. I like that second one. We should, we should talk about that second one a bit more. He ends up having to go through trials and tribulations to find the family that he so righteously deserves. This little orphan Oliver was animated by another prolific animator at the Disney Studios. But... Who could have brought such a cute little kitty to wife? Let's find- <clears throat> Let's find out. Mark Henn was born in 1958 in Dayton, Ohio. As a child, drawing came naturally, and like many Disney animators, Disney animation was a huge influence on his aspirations. I was at a camp. Uh, Indian Guides, which was a, a YMCA club for boys, and the one of the uh, weekend's entertainment was we watched you know, The Reluctant Dragon. Not just the short, we watched the entire feature film. The, but the thing that struck me was he ends up ducking, he's, he's hiding from the page, and he ducks into an animator's office, which he doesn't know that, but he ducks into this office and here's, here's Ward Kimball, Norm Ferguson, Freddie Moore. He ducks in their office. He's like, hi, fellas. Do you mind if I hide out in here for a minute? And they're like, no, oh, sure. Come on in. So and in that time that he's in the animation office, they show him. You see uh, Norm Ferguson doing some animation with uh, Pluto. Um, they screen on a moviola. They show him the short film. Um, how uh, how to ride a horse with Goofy, but the thing that really c uh, cemented it for me was he walks over to Ward Kimball's desk, and here's Ward Kimball finishing a drawing of Goofy, and he's looking over his shoulder, and he starts saying, "Oh, you mind if I watch?" "No, oh, sure." Come on, watch. Pretty soft for you, just making funny pictures all day. You think so? Well, the first hundred thousand are the hardest. I know who it is now. Goofy. Only three fingers. Yeah, saves time and looks better. <laughs> Don't forget that other button. <laughs> no shoes. Boy, what size are those? Oh, about uh, 15 and a half. <laughs> there you are. Now let's see how the whole scene looks. Ready? Okay, shoot. Goofy comes to life and starts dancing around, and I was just, my eyes, my <laughs> mind, just, I was just blown away. And to see a drawing, which I love to draw, now come to life, you know, dance around, I, I was just, wow. And that's when I really got the bug bit. <laughs> After high school, Hen originally attended a community school in Ohio, 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 Ohio. But after a while, he realized he needed to get a more formal art education. A good friend of mine in high school, if you can believe this, had given me a catalog. In those days, if you were applying to a college, you actually got a physical catalog of, of you know everything about the college. So she had given me this catalog. She said, here, you might be interested in this. And it, the Disney can, uh, animation program at CalArts started in, I think, 74, 75. Right. So I got this catalog when I was like a sophomore, junior in high school. And I'm like, oh, oh I'd love to go here, but I can't. I mean, I'm, I'm here in Ohio. How am I ever going to make it to California? And I stuck it in my drawer, in my desk, in my, in my bedroom. Well, after two years of college, I realized I really need to get a better art education. So I pulled that catalog out again, and I looked at it, and I said, well, I need to maybe look into this. In the meantime, I had sent portfolios directly to the studio. I sent three portfolios to the studio. The first one met with some interest. And they said, let's see some more work. The second one, they said, basically said, stay in school. This is what you need to focus on. <laughs> and the third one, they basically said, Stop sending us stuff. Stop yeah. sending us stuff. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, but no thank you. Yeah. Um, uh, Don, Don Duckwall was the gentleman in charge of the department, and his, 
his line, which is embedded in my brain, said that it wasn't that I was a bad artist, but it was that I probably wouldn't have the artistic talent to travel the narrow roads that our animators travel. Wow. I'll never forget that. I'm going to use that when I'm it, looking at students' work. There you go. <laughs> so essentially, I already had two years of college in, and I knew I needed to get to uh, a more of an art school, so I applied to CalArts with essentially the same portfolio that the studio had rejected. Yeah. I, I juiced it up a little bit, and lo and behold, the letter came, and I'll never forget it, and I got didn't get past the first word, which was congratulations. And it was like, I'm going to California. <laughs> and my dad's face just kind of went, uh, uh, <laughs> how are we going to afford that? Yeah, yeah. How, how are we going to do that? In 1980, Mark Henn was hired by Disney Animation Studios and started in the training program where he was mentored by Eric Larson. Not to be confused with Gary Larson, that guy who did all the Far Side comics. Nor to be confused with Mitch Larson, who wrote all of this stuff. When you started at the studio in those days, you went through uh, their training program, which was uh, run by Eric Larson, who was one yes. of the original nine old men. And Eric, uh, you would go in and you would do the first four weeks, you would do a personal a pencil test. And then that was subject to a, a review of the board at that time. And if they liked it, then you did another four weeks. And if so, after completing eight weeks, if they were happy with what you were doing, then you essentially, at that point in time, you went one of two paths. You either went into cleanup or you went into uh, uh, with an animator as his rough assistant, rough in-betweener. So um, I, you know, I did my eight weeks and I didn't know Glenn really well at that point. I knew of him, but he liked my test. So he put in to have me join him uh, as his new rough in-betweener. Because uh, I think some of his other assistants, like Chris Buck and some others, had already moved up the ranks and were, you know, some junior animators at that point. So I actually only had probably six months working in Glenn's uh, unit. We finished up uh, the end of production on Fox and the Hound. But once that production character animation was largely finished, often in those days it was an all hands on deck situation to get the movie finished. So I found myself next stop. I was helping out in effects doing car headlights for the widow and, and uh, leaves and different things. They just needed everybody who was available to help out because effects was one of the last uh, production uh, areas to go through. But I was soon, you know, out on my own working on, because to get a promotion you had to do another test of your, on your own time and of your own, own design. And so I did a, started working on a second test, hoping to get promoted up to being an assistant animator. And uh, so within a year, long story short, within a year of starting at the studio, I had gotten my promotion and was, uh, as you said, I was an animator, promoted to animator, yeah. Hen's first project as a full animator was animating some mouse on Mickey's Christmas Carol. That, uh, there was a project that was floating around the studio called uh, Musicana, which was kind of a Fantasia type project. And so there were a lot of different, like Fantasia, a lot of different little stories that were going to be set to music. One of them was Mickey and the Nightingale, which was, oh. you know, set against a Chinese uh, Asian background. But it was, yeah, it was Mickey in the starring role, uh, a retelling of that, uh, that story of the Emperor and the Nightingale. So uh, Musicana, unfortunately, came and, and didn't go anywhere, but I loved the idea. So I just kind of took my inspiration from that to develop and do a little test of Mickey uh, with that in mind. And Bernie Mattinson, who in the meantime had approached the studio, there was uh, Mickey's Christmas Carol started as a, a children's album. You know, record. Remember those? Oh, and yeah, they, uh, you they, know, they call them vinyls. Vinyls, yeah, they're vinyl now. But anyway, it was a children's album of Mickey's, you know, retelling of the famous Dickens Christmas Carol. And so Bernie had, unbeknownst to me, had approached the studio about developing that as a project, and they said yes. And then the next thing I know, uh, Bernie had asked me and had seen my test. You know, I had gotten the promotion, but he, they were looking for somebody to, I guess fill the void of doing a being a Mickey animator. But you were kind of like the main Mickey animator. I mean, did they make you like the lead? Uh, I was one of the lead animators for that per, uh, that show, yeah. I mean, that's I mean, you went from like a trainee to the lead on the show, it sounds like. Yeah. yeah. 
Grayson Ponty writes in his blog, Hen animates a Mickey that is very humble, innocent, and unselfish using subtle movements, reserved but meaningful expressions, and true warmth to make the audience feel sympathetic for him. It's all very subtle, and every movement and gesture communicates character and has meaning. Mm, two minutes fast. Well, never mind those two minutes. You may go now. Ha! Oh, thank you, sir! You're so kind! Never mind the mushy stuff, just go. But be here all the earlier the next day. I will, I will, sir! And a bah humbug! <laughs> I mean, a Merry Christmas to you, sir! After a short stint on The Black Cauldron, for which he animated the scenes with Gertie in his first appearance in the film, Hen was cast as the lead in what our script supervisor would call the greatest Disney animated film, The Great Mouse Detective. And I think he's right. He animated three separate characters, the socially inept genius Basil of Baker Street, the kind and skittish Dr. Dawson, and the sweet Olivia. Grayson Ponty writes... Mark's work on Basil is a more refined version of the sincere, character-driven animation he did with Mickey three years earlier. For inspiration, he extensively observed and sketched the actors of Basil and Dawson recording their lines and a lot of the poses and attitudes from the recording session make it back in the final film. Great contrast, Basil is confident and courageous, while Dawson is cautious and laid back in nature. I love how the character relationship and personalities of the character are so extensively defined by Mark. They're completely believable and their gestures really give us a glimpse into what they are feeling, but in a subtle, natural way. Mr. Basil, I need your help and... Oh, good time. But, but you don't understand. I'm in terrible trouble. If you'll excuse me. No, 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 no. Oh, see here. This young lady is in need of assistance. I think you ought to listen. Well, this, please, Doctor. Of course. But, good. Uh, well, wait just a moment. How the deuce did you know I was a doctor? A surgeon, to be exact. Just returned from military duty in Afghanistan. Am I right? Ah. <laughs> uh, yes. Major David Q. Dawson. Ah, <sighs> such a good movie. It don't get the respect it deserves, I tell you what, people. This is also the film where Hen refined his skill for turning out feet of animation very quickly, something that Hen has come to be known for. In Disney's next film, Hen was cast again as the main character, which seems to be a theme with him. He animated the adorable main character, Oliver, and his eventual owner, spoilers, Jenny. This is a significant film because it marks a gradual change in his style over the years, Grayson writes where instead of having a lot of round, caricatured shapes, a lot like, let's say, Fred Moore's style, emphasis on lines and distinct, spaced-out poses, as in much of his earlier work, his style became more smooth and drawn out in a way that is very light, but is very powerful in many ways, like the style of Ollie Johnston. Oliver, in particular, has one of these new components used well that would later become vital to Mark's work, importance on light, sensitive physical contact, and touching between two characters. Having two characters touch helps to create a more genuine, sincere scene. All right, Winston. I gotta practice now, kitty. Oh, you wanna practice too. <laughs> Disney's next film, The Little Mermaid, saw Hen co-supervising Ariel with Glenn Keane. Sound familiar? Well, you can learn more about him here. While Glenn handled most of Ariel's more emotional scenes, Hen handled scenes that saw the mermaid as more of a teenager. Continuing with Grayson Ponte, who has an amazing blog that you can check out in the description, he writes, In terms of characterization, there are some notable differences between his mermaid and Keane's mermaid. While Glenn Keane gave Ariel a burning, dynamic desire to become a human and strong, mature emotion of love towards Eric, to Ariel, Mark took a little more of a relaxed approach to the character and tried to put the problems and emotions of a teenage girl in her to make her and her story believable. While Keane spent a lot of time dealing with the more powerful, intensely emotional scenes, such as Part of Your World, Hen animated a lot of the scenes where Ariel doesn't have a voice, such as the one where she's having dinner with Eric and Grimsby as well as her first scene at the beginning of the film with Flounder, animated by the great Barry Temple. The touching scene where she sees Eric for the first time, 
the section where she is debating whether or not he loves her, and the final kiss at the end. While most animators show strong, compelling emotions through broad action or bold work that communicates the feeling very effectively and strongly, Hen communicates equally powerful emotions but does so through subtle expressions and gentle touches. Hen has so many more contributions to the Disney family. He is the longest continuously employed artist at the Disney Studios. He is still working on Disney films to this day. There's still plenty more to talk about, but as a sneak peek to the next episode, which will come relatively soon, here is a very famous scene that he was responsible for. Get the cat out of here. <clears throat> Sorry about that. Uh, here it is. I can show you the world. Shining, shimmering, splendid. Tell me, princess, now when did you last let your heart decide? Thank you for watching this episode of Dizographies. Click the thumbs up button below if you liked it, and if you want to be notified when the next episode comes out, consider subscribing. Comment below with characters you would like to see us cover. Further reading and references are linked in the description. We hope to see you in another Dizography.